Hey guys, we're going to be finishing up our update product mutation. So the last thing we needed to do was make sure only the seller of the product is updating it. So I want to show you guys right now how this is exploitable because we don't have this check and then we're going to add it and show you it's no longer able to just edit anyone else's product. So right now let's hop over to the GraphQL playground and first I want to just fetch the products and I can't right now. And that's because I'm not logged in, right? I have no HTTP headers. So to be able to do that, I need to just add, uh, create a user basically right now, fresh user. Um, and we're not checking any fields for email, password, or name, so I can just make it one character short. Create this, have my token. So now I can be logged in like this. Um, we can say authorization. And I can say bear. And then put a space and then paste in the token. And then you're good. So now I can access products, pass in the ID. So, and let's also grab the name. So I definitely didn't create this product, right? Because I just created my user. Um, so let's change the name of this. So I'm gonna type a mutation and we're just gonna say update product, the ID, and then the name is now gonna be new Sally. And let's say we want to get ID from this. Now I noticed a little bug in our mutation also. So when we run this, we get an error. And we're not getting the error because we're not the seller. We're getting an error for a different reason. And the reason is because we're passing null to the price and the picture URL when you cannot pass in null to the product. Um, we don't. We only want to pass in these guys if they're not null. So the way we're going to do this is by creating a object up here called data and then we're going to be adding fields to it and passing data into here now and I only want to add the field if uh, it actually has a value so to know that I'm just going to check if name and then add it in so here I'm going to say data.name is equal to name and we're going to get a little error because TypeScript doesn't like you just adding properties like that so I'm going to create a interface up here. So interface product data and add some optional fields. The name, which is a string, the price, which is a double or sorry, not a double, a number. And then finally picture URL, which is the string. So now we can assign this, this type here product data and it's happy with us again. So now we can add this if statement here. So instead of saying, uh, just setting it to picture URL, we can say data.picture URL. And then we can also check the price. And we can say data.price is equal to price. All right, so now we're good and that should get rid of that initial error. All right, so we see it's been updated, and let's grab the products now. ID name. All right, we see new Sally. So I was able to change that, which is bad. So I'm gonna bring this back, and now we're gonna call it new Sally 2. Um, but I'm gonna wait and run this after we make this check. So this is what's gonna prevent that from happening. So but what was the problem before is we were not able to get the seller ID um, with the product. And so we have to tell we have to tell um, Prisma that we want the seller because it doesn't add it automatically. And the way we tell it is through this info, which is this last parameter here. Notice how we can either just pass in info from GraphQL, which is this GraphQL resolve info, which is this thing. Or in this case, we don't want to resolve what this is. We want a custom thing. We can also pass a string. So here I can actually, this is like me querying the product in GraphQL. So here I could specify I would like the ID back or I would like the picture URL back. I can select whatever fields I want. So the field I want is the seller field. And from that field, I want the ID. Um, so it's just like you're selecting a GraphQL field here as you pass in. So that tells it what it wants. And now we're good. So now we check whether the seller ID is equal to the product ID, and if they're not, we say not authorized. 
um, so no errors here now let's go ahead and run this and bam we get not authorized now perfect so we're no longer letting people just change other people's products on the back end which is really good so let's make sure it still works on the front end so let's just refresh that guy um, so let's edit Asher and call him Asher too and cool so I am the owner of Asher and I was able to still update him so we didn't break any functionality alright so there's two or three other things I want to add to this app before finishing and wrapping it up um, the first is a search bar and some filtering options that way we can kind of see how we can do those things in Prisma the next thing is being able to uh, grab all the products so right now our product list is really short but it could be long in that case I want to add uh, pagination and infinite loading and then the last thing is with subscriptions and being able to like click on the things and almost like a bidding system so that's what's coming up what I want to do in this video or the rest of this video is just get set up what I want to do next which is that search bar and uh, maybe add some buttons so we're gonna head over here to products and uh, get started with that so I'm just gonna add it to the top and we have a button here and we can just put it right underneath so I'm gonna create a new view for this and I'm gonna create or add a text field and we may end up moving this to its own component later but for now I'm gonna add him here and let's go ahead and import that from our components so import text field from dot 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 components and unable to resolve oh slash text field okay and then underneath that I'm just going to have and maybe we add a placeholder search and under that we're gonna have a view and in this view I guess we can have three buttons these are gonna be like filtering buttons so title and so when I click on these buttons and we can add a dummy on press um, maybe I want to search by alphabetically so by the name or maybe I want to filter by the price and is there any other way we want to filter these by I think those are really the only two fields here but this will give you an ID idea of how to do it um, doesn't really make sense to filter by these alright so that's good let's save and see what this looks like I want these two to be okay so we have our text field I don't see search showing up I wonder if we are not able to pass in placeholders uh, I'll double check and then I want these two to be in the same column so I'm gonna add a style here or sorry in the same row and let's go ahead and up here and create one so we'll say filter row or this is not really filtering this is really sorting I should say sort so sort row and we're just going to uh, flex it as a row So styles dot sort row. Okay, and I want to center those, or I really should just put flex one on the button. So we'll say sort button flex one because I want them to just basically take half the screen each. Oops. I just messed that up there we go and then down here let's add the style so styles dot and then sort button and then add it here as well and then I think we'll be good and I want to check on the text field and make sure it doesn't look like it's expanding how I wanted it to um, let's double check on the placeholder real quick too 
So I think we're just not passing extra props to this. Okay, the placeholder is whatever we use as the name. So let's name that to search. Okay, cool, so that pops up there. Maybe we add some padding or something to that so it has some room. So the style will say styles.search bar. Search bar. And I'm just gonna say a padding of, I don't know, 10. And that did nothing, let's try margin. That did nothing too. I don't know why that didn't work. Uh, I'm guessing because we're not passing it in. Yep, so styles.field. All right, so there's some automatic styles we're already passing in. So really I wanna join the two um, together. That's one way to do it. I think I'm um, to simplify this. That way we don't uh, overwrite any and break any f uh, styles we have. I'm just gonna wrap it with a view. Okay, and cool. So that brought the search bar down a little bit. That's better. Um, I don't know why these guys are not just flexing all the way out. Um, let's check the background colors and just see. So I think sort row just might not be uh, the. I think actually maybe I just need to tell this to flex. Nope, that didn't work. So let's set background color to pink. And so we can kind of see where it's laying out. I think it's just not, okay, so that's what I wanted it to do. So I want these two to take equal space and I'm telling them to flex one. Let's also say align item center. And justify, I think it's justify content. Justify content center. There we go, that looks better. I kinda wanted these right here, but I'll settle for this. Flex didn't seem to do anything, and we can get rid of the pink. Okay, so what we'll do in the next video is get the name and price button working, so it filters by that, and then also we can search, I don't know, I wanna search for Asher or whatever else. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.